In 1368 in China, the Mongolian dynasty of Yuan is overthrown by the Ming dynasty of the Hongwu Emperor, but some regions resist the new power. This is notably the case in Yunnan, where Ma Sanbao is born around 1371. He would later be known as Zheng He. He's from a rich, noble Muslim family. His father is a respected general who made the pilgrimage to Mecca. In 1381, a Ming army enters Yunnan to subdue the last rebel pockets. Mao Sanbao is captured, and his father is killed in battle. At the age of 13, Ma Sanbao becomes a eunuch. That is to say, he's castrated to ensure that he will never be able to found his own dynasty. He's then sent to the court of Zhu Di, the fourth son of the emperor, who's also the prince of Yan in the north. Ma Sanbao is quickly recognized for his diplomatic and strategic skills, which allow him to rise in rank until he becomes a recognized military commander at the age of 20. In 1398, Emperor Hongwu dies. His eldest son having already died, his grandson Jian Wen takes the throne. But a civil war quickly breaks out between Jian Wen and Zhu Di. The latter wins and becomes the new emperor under the name of Yongle. Ma Sanbao, having played a decisive role in the victory, is promoted to the most important position in the court by becoming great eunuch and is renamed Zhang Ha. Yongle establishes his power and moves the capital to Beijing, where he orders the construction of a huge palace which will become known as the Forbidden City. Moreover, he gathers more than 2,000 scholars of all kinds to start writing the Yongle Encyclopedia, which would be the largest in the world for six centuries. Finally, to make his empire shine, he decides to organize a maritime expedition to the Western Ocean in order to establish diplomatic relations. Zhang Ha is appointed to organize and lead this expedition. He supervises the construction of a huge fleet of about 250 ships. They're mainly large junks, but also about 60 treasure ships, that is to say, ships of an unequaled size at the time, sometimes having up to nine masts. The ships are loaded with food, live animals, and drinking water. On July 11, 1405, the fleet leaves with 27,800 men, mainly military. The expedition follows the already known trade routes, going to meet people who are still unknown in China. Zhang Ha has to greet the local sovereigns on behalf of the Ming Emperor and to offer them gifts. The expedition, after having skirted the coasts of Champa, reaches the island of Java, then goes up towards the island of Sumatra to pass the Strait of Malacca. The ships then launch out into the open sea, reaching the island of Ceylon. There, the immense Ming fleet is perceived as a threat by the local king, who shows himself hostile to Zhang Ha. The expedition then continues its route to reach Calicut, an important commercial crossroads in the heart of the Indian Ocean. In 1407, Zhang Ha sets out again towards the east. As he crosses the Straits of Malacca, he hears of a powerful Chinese pirate who sees the city of Palembang and is attacking merchant ships. Zhang Ha wants to ensure stability in the region and decides to play the role of policeman. Engaging in battle, he defeats the pirate and takes him prisoner. He returns to Nanjing on October 2, 1407. Zhang Ha tells the emperor about his trip and his discoveries, mentioning in particular rare animals. Yongle is satisfied and orders a second expedition, which leaves a few days later. But it's not certain that Zhang Ha participated in this one. Overall, the itinerary is the same as the first expedition, with a passage to the Kingdom of Siam, present-day Thailand. In 1409, a third expedition sets out. This time, it's certain that Zhang Ha is its commander. Arriving in Ceylon, he decides to attack the local king, who remains hostile to him and to the new Ming Empire allies. After engaging in battle, Zhang Ha prevails, and a new king favorable to the Ming takes the throne. In addition, Zhang Ha erects a stele on the island, on which is written, in Chinese, Persian, and Tamil, an offering which is made to Buddha, to Allah, and to Vishnu. 
A year and a half later, in 1413, a fourth expedition is organized. This time, Zhang Ha is charged with venturing further afield to continue to expand Chinese influence throughout the world and to strengthen diplomatic relations by bringing new gifts to the rulers. After reaching Calicut, he continues on to Hormuz, discovering a great trading city filled with foreign merchants. On the way back, Zhang Ha learns that in Samudera, the sultan with whom he's in contact is being challenged by a rebel who's trying to take over. This time, Zhang Ha intervenes directly in internal affairs in order to protect the interests of the Ming Empire. On his return to Nanjing, emissaries from different states brought gifts to the Yongle Emperor as a sign of gratitude. The emperor gives them paper money, which is a Chinese invention, copper coins, and silk fabrics. The following year, in 1417, the emperor charges Zhang Ha to leave in order to accompany the emissaries back home. After reaching Hormuz, Zhang Ha pushes the expedition even further and sails along the coasts of the Arabian Peninsula and then Africa. On the way, he receives giraffes, lions, and elephants. Zhang Ha returns to China and hands over all these exotic animals to the emperor. He then leaves for a sixth expedition of a similar nature. But while he's at sea, the situation becomes complicated for Yongle. Financially, the numerous construction sites in the new capital Beijing, the military expeditions against the Mongols, and the diplomatic expeditions of Zhang Ha are very expensive and cause discontent among the populace. Yongle then decides to temporarily suspend the expeditions of Zhang Ha. In the north, the Mongols take advantage of the instability to launch new military raids against China. The emperor then takes the head of an army and goes to fight them, but he dies in campaign on August 12, 1424. His son Hong Shi comes to power and permanently suspends Zhang Ha's travels, but he dies the following year and is replaced by his own son, Zhuand. The latter orders Zhang Ha to finalize the construction of the Nanjing Porcelain Pagoda. Then in 1431, he authorizes Zhang Ha to make a seventh and last journey to inform all the kingdoms of the changes in the Ming Empire. The expedition again follows the same route. This time, part of the crew even reaches Jeddah to go to Mecca. On the way back in 1433, Zhang Ha dies at the age of 62. In China, instability remains high and diplomatic expeditions, which had become unpopular, are henceforth prohibited as well as the construction of new large ships. The huge imperial fleet is dismantled, and the archives and other documents mentioning Zhang Ha's expeditions are destroyed or lost. On July 11, 2005, 600 years after the departure of the first expedition, China decides to make July 11 the Maritime Day of China in honor of Zhang Ha.